Welcome to my channel, Dr. Munshi Nasser Skill Tone. How are you, my dear learners? In this video, I am going to talk about some very important tools that will help your research article writing in a very good shape. So, without further delay, let us get started. The first tool that I am going to talk about is the no wondering chat GPT. Why chat GPT? Chat GPT will help you to identify your research title. Sometimes what happens my dear learners, we can't find a appropriate research title. In that case, nowadays different AI platform, especially the chat GPT will help you to identify your research title. Not only that, if you find out your title, you may as well find out your research problem using this chat GPT because chat GPT has the power to write on behalf of you what you are looking for. But my dear learners, there is always a room for plagiarism if you copy and paste directly from chat GPT. So don't too much use chat GPT for writing your article. Initially selecting your title, narrow down your title, you can use it. But after that, try to use your own words to write the rest of the article. The next one that I am going to talk about is to help you for your literature review. There are many tools available in the market. However, in my channel I have talked about lot of times there are many softwares like MaxQDA, Envivo and QDA Manual Lite. These are the three important softwares that will make your life easy in order to write your literature review. So use these softwares to write down your literature review because software will help you to reduce the time and to write your article in quick manner. The next thing you have to look at some of the other tools for instance referencing. You know while you are starting writing your literature review you need to add some references and therefore in my channel I already discussed and I have tutorial however you know that there are many referencing managing tools for, for example Zotero, Mendeley, EndNote. So in my opinion Zotero is one of the best referencing managing tools. Use Zotero for your referencing manager tools. So now you have literature review done, you will move to methodology section. Now my dear learners often we find that what it what is my appropriate methodology or what are the methodological gap available for publishing in a good quality scopus or web of science journal in that case as i told you earlier in my previous videos first you select your journals probably one or two journal you select first and then find out previously published articles from that particular journal and those articles you will find related to your research title or research domain what are the missing gap in methodological section. Sometimes what happen similar type of articles will use different type of methodology. For instance, sub, some articles in that particular journal might use qualitative study. In that case, you might add a quantitative study to make a new contribution with a similar type of topic in your research domain. Sometimes similar type of methodology used in a different type of countries. You can use the same methodology for your country selection. So in order to find out that gap, my opinion, go to the literature, go to that particular journal and find out what are the missing articles which have methodology similar to your research field but some of the gap available maybe qualitative quantitative maybe mixed method you might use one of this type of methodology in order to pursue your research paper writing for your own purpose and remember you are going to target that journal because you are trying to submit your paper in that particular selected journals so better cite their article more in your research. Next my dear learners, you need to download data. Now for secondary data you can use world development indicator which I already have a video in my channel. You can use our world in data, you can use pen world table, 
you can use IMF data for economics and social science. Sometimes there are many other data sources available in Google which you can download for your purpose for example, in applied science and life science domain. Now, what about the data that requires survey? Now, in order to do that you can use SurveyMonkey, you can use Google Docs to collect your survey. Now, sometimes you need FGD, sometimes you need focus group discussion together with the interview method in a qualitative study. Yes, you need to prepare for that and you need to go and collect that information and transcribe using your if you have a mobile phone or if you, you might have a recording system, record the whole session and then transcribe that using NVivo software or Max QDA to analyze your qualitative data. So, either you can go for a secondary sources or you can go for a survey or you can qualitative data survey. So, whatever you do design it early, do not wait until the section comes when the methodology section comes. Just start from the very beginning what would be your variable, what would be your dependent or independent variable and go and try to accumulate those information earlier because you never know you might not find the data once you start the research. Then what will happen? You already started the research, you already invested your time, but there is no data available in the field. So, you have to start changing your research topic which of course, a troublesome work correct. So, in order to start your research before starting in my opinion you need to select the variables and search for the data sources and design your questionnaire for survey. Now, next is how to analyze your data either qualitative or quantitative. In my opinion JAPS is the best software for qualitative and quantitative study because JAPS does have the option of structural equation modeling, meta analysis on the other hand regression and machine learning. So, both the places you have the option in a JAPS software which is of course, free. I have a video where I showed how to upload the survey data in JAPS software you can have a look from my channel. So, JAPS is one of the best tool for your qualitative and quantitative study. So, in my opinion use the JAPS free software. Now, once you analyze your data and write down your result discussions go to the conclusion and find out the three important key contributions. It is very important to find out what you are contribution. You know sometimes what happen when we sell a product people ask us what is your USP, USP meaning that unique selling proposition. So, in that case for us what would be our contribution if reviewer asks from the journal we need to highlight the contribution. It might be a theoretical contribution, it might be a methodological contribution or it might be a both theoretical and methodological and you are doing it using empirical analysis. So, write down those contributions in one or two or three sentences very specifically. It is very important you write it down in the conclusion together with the summary of your study. Now, finally, you already done every section introduction, method literature review, methodology, result discussion, analysis and of course, the referencing. Now, you might want to remove the plagiarism. In order to remove the plagiarism, iAuthenticate and Turnitin these are the two softwares available to check your plagiarism. I would suggest that buy the subscription if you do not have or you ask your institutions to buy it for you because these are the very important tools in order to find out the plagiarism from your article. And once you find the article there are always a room for paraphrasing. One way is manually doing the paraphrasing which I, re I recommend and I already have a video on that how to paraphrase in a simple way go and look at that video. Otherwise, you might take the help from grammar Grammarly or Quillboard. Quillboard in my opinion in is one of the best paraphrasing tool that is available. Sometimes the Quillboard gives you the free options, but there is a subscription you can always go for a subscription if you wish, but this free version will always do some work on behalf of you. So, you can use the Quillboard paraphrasing tool in order to remove the plagiarism and similarity from your article. Now, remember my dear ad learners these are the tools that I just shared with you are important for writing an article because nowadays without help taking the helps of the 
tools you may not write a proper article and you can write but that will take a long long time it may require one or two months but the way i am explaining it will help you to write your article in a week time if you give a proper schedule for writing your article so use those tools and of course if you require any help in any section while writing your article for research especially in social science finance and business domain you can always contact me using my facebook and also my youtube description box contact you can always reach me i will of course come back and help you as much as i can so with that note thank you so much for listening the whole video and i'll see you in the next tutorial with a new topic that you will love it Thank you my dear learners, goodbye.